All right, guys, we have a very interesting survey from Hired.com. Today, we're going to find out if you got the skills to pay the bills, if you got dev making the bread. No, we're going to find out not only are what the average developer making sort of uh, nationwide, but also, you know, there's a lot of cool thing, questions in here by thousands of people who submitted their salaries and, and were surveyed, like, did they find that a master's degree was worth it? You know, what cities uh, are they moving to? What's important to the average developer? We're going to learn a lot of really cool stuff. I already looked at this, and it was one of the best ones I've seen in a very long time. So let's dive into the 2019 State of Salaries Report from Hired.com. <laughs> I want to take a moment to thank our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. Dev Mountain has a variety of programs from full stack JavaScript to iOS development, UI, UX, quality assurance. They're one of the very few programs that provide housing alongside their tuition and one of the most affordable programs. I had the pleasure of seeing some of their campuses and they were gorgeous. I highly encourage you to check them out at devmountain.com. All right, so uh, 2019, baby. So I, um, here's one thing that you might find interesting. The average San Francisco uh, tech worker makes 145,000, which um, it's a good, it may sound like a lot, but when the average one bedroom apartment is $4,000 in San Francisco, you can see very quickly, um, and it's not, not all that great, but uh, some really cool tweets here. Um, Boston and Toronto grew by 9% in terms of salary which is a great um austin tech workers would need to make another eighty three thousand dollars to just have the same cost of living in san francisco um half in town in london believe they're paid uh only half believe they're paid fairly this is something that was sort of interesting to me because i've had so many people from england actually ask me why they get paid so crappy and i i don't know but it seems to be something that people are upset about only 23% of people believe their masters or doctorates commanded them a higher salary. So three out of four people with their degrees, their advanced degrees, masters or doctorates, didn't think it helped them make any more money, which is something I found stunning. And then um, relocation to Austin, Seattle, or Amsterdam is uh, very attractive. And then, of course, uh, Asian tech. Oh, that's, of course. Uh, I didn't say of course. Uh, I meant... <laughs> I meant of course, here. Of course, I'd want to move to Austin or Seattle or Amsterdam. But uh, apparently, Asian uh, tech workers uh, out earn their white counterparts for 2000 and uh, black tech workers are the lowest paid at $13,000 less than Asian tech workers. I, I don't understand why. Um, I think, honestly, you get what you ask for. I could tell you that um, one of my good buddies who's African-American uh, who works with me uh, on a separate team, he asked for more money, and then he got more money. Um uh, so be more assertive. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Sixty uh, percent of tech talent plan to leave their current city within five years. So majority of us are moving. So we're gonna ask. We're gonna ask some good questions. Does an advanced degree help you get a higher paycheck? What's next up beyond salary, compensation benefits? Because compensation is just not benefits. So, um, okay, where did this data come from? Four hundred twenty thousand interview requests. With over 10,000 participating companies and more than uh, 98,000 uh, job seekers. 1,800 global tech candidates on the marketplace. Great. Lots of numbers. Um, Boston, Austin, and D.C. are giving San Francisco run for money. Why? Because who would want to live in San Francisco? You can't start when the average house is $1.3 million in San Francisco. You have no chance of buying anything there. So can't really deal with it. Now, Here's something that's pretty cool. I, I wish they had Tampa on here. I know Tampa's not a very big tech hub. That's where I'm at. But um, this is uh, – I'm, I'm right with the, the global average here once we add everything together. But they took probably the top tech cities here uh, that are on the map and, uh, you know, pretty much what I, what I expected. Um, global average is 129. U.S. average is 135. Uh, and that's taking into consideration Paris and London. Now, um, one thing I would say, if you're looking at this, you're looking for areas to move to, probably Denver and Austin. Maybe I, I, I don't know about Chicago, but like this is probably where you can get the most bang for your buck looking at it here. Um, just because 
you go to Boston or New York, you're just going to be broke. You go to Los Angeles, you're going to be broke. You go to San Diego, you might be all right. San Francisco, you're broke. Uh, that's just the truth of the matter. And you can see how salaries have gone up over the years. So um, I wonder what happened in 2017 that I went down on average in Denver. That just must be a, a spike. Um, but you can see, generally speaking, salaries are going up in the Seattle also, right? Seattle, Seattle's been growing and growing and growing. Um, it's going to continue to, to go up here. Um, DC. DC took a big hit right there. But uh, some of the top software engineering roles, search engineer, security engineer, blockchain engineer. These are all sort of niche type roles. And because of it, and because like certain roles of here, like there's not that many security engineers. Blockchain engineer is a new field. Search engineer, I'm guessing, has to do with making your site more search engine optimized. I'm not quite sure. Um, but you can see that these are some of the higher paying stuff. And as you go into New York, you can see blockchains there, Toronto, um, some machine learning, some uh, AI stuff, London, embedded engineer, not sure what that is, data engineer, blockchain engineer, and of course Paris, you got some other stuff here. And uh, by the way, I'll include a link to this in the description below. If you're interested, you can download some additional things and um, and see uh, how you can, you know, your company can improve, like in this case and other other items. Um, so as we mentioned, sixty percent of people are willing to move, right? So um, one thing that keeps me in uh, Tampa is that I don't have any state tax. So I, if I were to go back to Los Angeles, I think it's a progressive tax, but I think in the tax bracket I'm in, it goes up to twelve percent. They just take out of my check on the high end. Um, forget cost of living; that's just taxes on on that type. Um, but, uh, Austin tops the list an adjusted salary of 208,000 would, uh, would need to be of an $83,000 raise just to have the same cost of living in San Francisco, um, Denver and Seattle, you need 185, 182 respectively to just be based off of, uh, to sort of have that, uh, expense there. So cool stuff. Um, now here's the thing that I think is very true. Um, given the cost of living in currency, do you think you're compensated fairly? 53% said yes, 47% said no. So even though developers are paid very well, they also have to live in some of the highest costed areas in the nation. Thus, they're like, I should get paid better than this, which is, you know, I tell people all the time to try and find more remote areas. Now, are, what are the main motivators to relocate, which three out of five people are willing to do? Hey, 40% uh, say, I just want to see a new city. I can respect that. Me too. Um, tw one in four. This is where I fall into. Want to live in a less expensive city. Um, interested in a uh, opportunity outside. Want to live closer to your family. I can fall into both these categories here. Most common places to relocate. Austin, Seattle, Amsterdam. Never in my life. Um, and here's, a, here's one thing I saw that was especially important. Our global survey respondents as the third most popular city to relocate for tech talent without children and seventh with children. So a lot of these a lot of these very high cost cities that are up here, more people are willing to relocate to these without children, which is why like SF I think has such a a low a low age for um, developers. Because you know, it's not really a place that you can get a big house with and have children. I mean, you can have children anywhere. But, you know, you don't necessarily want to be going through the grind as you're having children. Um, unlock. What do I got to do to unlock this? <laughs> what is this a game? Uh, this ain't a game. We're talking about money. Cash money. Advanced degrees don't pay for themselves. So, um, uh, it makes a little note here about how, you know, these large companies, Apple, Google, PayPal... They've moved away from adding traditional education requirements, right? They're willing to take people like me, the self-taught devs, and, and uh, see how they do. So um, being asked to go into more detail here, do you think your master's or doctorate degree has impacted your career? 21 in 5 said, I don't know. Another 1 in, one in 4 said, yes, less than 1 in 4. Um, uh, a third people say, no, I could have done the same job without it. And uh, one in four says, I couldn't have done it without it, but uh, didn't get me more money. Are you interested in earning a master's degree or doctorate degree? The majority of people said no. Um, a little less than half said yes. Uh, 
Yeah. I, I personally, I've talked about this in the past, but I went back to school and then I realized I wasn't going to learn anything. It was very demoralizing. Um, so that's, I'm, I'm sort of in the no category. The sad thing is for me personally, this is sort of a personal thing is, uh, I've always wanted to be a teacher. I, uh, I think I would do a great job teaching computer science programs and teaching web development, uh, which is why I'll probably work at a, at a coding boot camp sometime in my career. But, uh, I'd like to teach out of college, but I'm not going back to school. That's the, that's, that's the truth of the matter. Uh, why aren't you interested in earning a master's degree? It's too expensive. Very true. I'm not interested. Also true for me. I think on-the-job experience is more valuable than additional schooling. Yep. Uh, the companies I am interested in working for don't value advanced degrees. All very good points. Um, where developers learn to code? According to this, 46% earned a computer science degree, 21% were self-taught, 20% had a, have a relevant college degree, and 13% participated in developer boot camps. This is, I think this was like down at 9 last time I saw this. So people are continuing to go to boot camps, continue doing well. Um, do you think your boot camp helped you prepare you for getting an engineering job? 76% said yes. So this to me is 100% passing. So why do I say that? Well, one in four went to shitty boot camps that were cheaper that they knew they shouldn't have gone to and that they didn't do any research on. That's the unfortunate truth because wherever there's real people trying to work on stuff, there's always people trying to take advantage of you. Um, and there are boot camps out there that will do that. A lot of those ones that they have programs ran by colleges that are just people trying to scam your money, those are the ones I'm talking about. Um, now the boot camps that have no affiliations with colleges, a lot of time that make it, that make their money based off of good word of mouth. Those are where the three fourths. Go. And on top of that, forget the, the bad boot camps. There's also a large majority of people who go to boot camps that are just there because they think they got an easy meal ticket. There's nothing easy about becoming a developer and getting your first step job. It's one of the hardest things you will ever have to do in your career. Keep that in mind. Um, so, okay, tech, technical hiring managers. Would you hire bootcamp grad for an, for a open role? 57% seven, said yes. 7% said no. 7% said I'm just not even interested in it. About a little less than uh, 1 in 10 said no. 36% said not sure. So I take this as 57, 6 out of 10 people said yeah, well, I'm for sure. Uh, and then 36% said I don't know. Let's see how they do. That to me sounds like pretty good odds when you have 93% open to the idea of hiring a bootcamp grad. Um, unfortunately, the uh, black tech workers' wage gap is growing. Um, okay. I don't know what to say. Uh, offered salary. Preferred salary. Who doesn't prefer more money? How does that even work? You were offered more money than you preferred? I don't. Okay. Salaries plateau after age 40. Um, huh. I wonder. So this is something that I've wondered. Uh, when I saw this, I wonder uh, that I want... I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if you are no longer looking to job hop or take, because the majority of your large pay increases typically come from job hopping very early on in your career, which means that as you stop that and you no longer, and you settle in, you know, you have kids and a family and you, you bought a house and you started laying down some roots. If those roots keep you out of the, the money pool, uh, I don't know that to be the case. Most people would just say ageism. Um, but I wonder if there's any cost to that. So tech workers who own versus rent, 65% rent their homes and apartments. 71% uh, of London tech workers rent their homes and apartment. 54% of parents own, while 18% of non-parents own. I'm in the 18%. Uh, almost a quarter of global tech renters say they can afford to buy but choose to rent. All right. Probably because they're okay moving around. Great. What are the most compelling benefits for global tech workers? Better health, dental, vision, insurance, unlimited PTO. I more so just prefer a lot of PTO because you have to use it. So this is sort of the one that the catch 22s with unlimited PTO is you have to get it approved, which you have to get all PTO approved for the most part, but you accrue it and then you can go and use it. So 
Studies have shown that if you get unlimited PTO, they'll take less than about 20 days. While if you gave someone, I don't know, 30 days of PTO, they'll use all 30 because uh, once it gets to a certain amount, they lose it. Um, paid maternity and parental leave, of course. Um, what are the top three global issues that tech workers are interested in solving? Economic opportunity unemployment. That's a very, very, a very nice goal. Global warming, lack of access to education. I follow this third one. This is something that I'm very interested in. Um, I don't know. I'm very passionate about education. As someone who really hated their time in college, so anytime education goes, so I'm big on mentoring, which is why I volunteer uh, and you know talk to kids about STEM whenever they they call me. I'm very, very passionate about this. Tech salaries and communications have room to grow. All right. So you see technology. You can start to see the breakdown between salaries. Um, if you're in a communications industry, uh, is that like radio? It's communications. You can see they're not getting paid as well. Um, entertainment, 140. I was, I was wondering about gaming. I think gaming falls into that space. Um, let's see a little breakdown for the UK. Uh, Go and Scala are very big languages and uh, something that's in high demand. As you can see. Salaries grown. Most en most in demand engineering positions by country: U.S. full stack engineer, back end engineer, front end engineer, mobile engineer, data engineer, machine learning engineer. Uh, should be no real surprise there. Um, and this one basically flipped between back and full stack. Top in demand tech skills. Feels good to be a JavaScript developer when you see something like that. Because uh, I work in JavaScript and Node. And I like what I'm seeing. Java, Python, SQL. I don't work in that too much, but everyone knows Python has been on the rise. Um, top programming languages by years of experience. Um, see, this one threw me off. 8.6%. What is this 8.6? So, is that how many people said it? In order to show the most accurate, break the data down by individual cities. All right. But JavaScript is uh in typescript see this uh, sort of sucks because this they broke this out into two separate things or else we overcome what javascript does all right uh six to ten years you got ruby ruby is very big and this is sort of i tell people all the time like oh, okay you know there's a ton of ruby developers out there and you know they're not necessarily starting new projects in ruby people hate me saying that um you know what i was really surprised to see that was on here that wasn't on here it was php by years of experience there's a lot of PHP devs. Inclusion, a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, methodology, state of salaries. You can download this whole thing, share it with your coworkers, let them know. But um, you know, pretty cool stuff, guys. Um, I really enjoyed looking at this. I thought it was really interesting. I'll include a link to it in the description below. If you're interested in any of my courses or anything like that, or any books I recommend so that you can level up, there's links in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Stop the video. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my 100 Algorithm Challenge course. Get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers. I, I actually just added some new content to it, so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well. There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.